In this video, we are going to create a new task in Planner using Power Automate. We're also going to update that particular task to include text inside the notes field of the Planner task. Now, you cannot do that natively with the Action Update Planner task in Power Automate. So we're going to walk you through how to use an Azure application to achieve that result. The goal of this is to create a new planner task that has details inside the notes section um, where it would otherwise normally be blank if you were to just manually go in here and add a task. We give a task name here, and then you would want to go into the task and add the notes to the task. So when you use the action in Power Automate, create a task. So here is create task. There's two different options. We're gonna use this original one here, the non-preview one. And whether you choose that one or the one that's in preview, you are not able to, through these advanced parameters here, add anything to the notes. So if we do show all, it's gonna show you that what you can include when you create a task using Power Automate. And notes is not one of these options. And the same is true if we were to go here and select update a task. So you choose update a task or update task details. And in the advanced parameters, there's no option for a notes field. So we're going to achieve this using an Azure application and an HTTP call to that application that we create. That will allow us to build a flow that will create a new task and then update that task, the notes field of that task. So let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing I'm doing is creating a brand new Power Automate Cloudflow with a manual trigger. Now you can use any trigger that you want, but for the sake of testing this flow, we're first going to create it with just a simple manual trigger. And the very first action that you'd want is this create a task action. Here's where you're going to need all of your planner details. So you need to, of course, already have a planner plan in place. And so I'm going to select my group ID and my plan ID from the drop down here. And then I'm going to choose a title of the task. And we'll just go ahead and call this uh, testing a new task. Now you can fill in all of these details down here. So again, you would you can choose from the drop down. You can search the different things, such as which bucket do you want to include it into and the other details here. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave all of that blank and we're going to move on to the rest. Now, as I explained earlier, we cannot use this update a task to simply update the notes. So we're going to delete that. And what we need instead is going to be an HTTP call to the Azure application, which we have not yet created. So I'm going to go over to my Azure, Microsoft Azure account, and I'm going to go to here where it says manage, and I'm going to go down to where it says app registrations. Now, all of my applications will appear under here, all applications, and I'm going to create a new application. So if I go to new registration, and I'm going to call this update planner task. And then I'm going to set um, my who can use this application to the first one here. It's only for my tenants, only for my organization. I'm going to click register. Now that I've done that, I've gone back to all applications and here is my newly created application. And if I click on that, it's going to take me into the app registration page where I can now go to manage and then go to API permissions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the API permissions that you see on the screen right here. 
So it's going to be per what you see here and the type will be either delegated or application. And then you're going to need to grant admin consent for your organization. So you will click on add a permission. You'll choose Microsoft Graft, and then you will select either delegated or application permissions per what you see here. So if I do delegated, and then I can search the permissions, group, read, write, all, and then I can find it. I can check the box and I can click add permissions, and then I'll continue on through the rest. So once you've added all of these, the next thing you're going to need to do is go to certificates and secrets, and you're going to need to add a new client secret. So you won't have anything here like I have right now, because I've already set up this application. And so I would click new client secret. I would add a description for this uh, secret for my descriptions, and then I'm going to select my expiration. I'm going to set it to 24 months, and I'm going to click Add. And once I've done that, you will see your value and your secret ID here. Those things you'll, you will need later on as we're setting up our workflow. So now that this is set up, we can go back into Power Automate, and we can add in our HTTP call. So let's go ahead and search HTTP. Now with the recent update with Power Automate, you can now favorite certain actions. This is one I use somewhat frequently. So I'm going to click the little star and that will favorite this action. So let's actually back out and let's click here. Oops, let's click add an action. And now my favorites will appear right at the top. So I can select from that to make it quicker. So the first HTTP action, we're having um, two HTTP calls. The first one is going to be in order to retrieve our access token. So I'm going to rename this to get access token. And the URI that we need is going to be found in the description of, of this video. And I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to click here and click add a note. And I'm going to put the URI template here. And that way I know what what is this um, tenant ID string here? What is the string um, reference, which is tenant ID. So that's what needs to go into these two in between these two forward slashes here. And so the tenant ID, you'll need to go back to your register Azure app, and you'll need to go to your uh, overview page here. And you can find at the top the tenant ID. So it's going to be called directory and then tenant ID. And you can copy to clipboard using the little copy icon at the end and then go back to your flow and you can paste it in there. Now this method is going to be post and the headers, we've got one header that we're dealing with. It's content dash type. And then the value is going to be application forward slash x www dash form dash URL encoded all in the description that you can find below. And then finally, we have the body of the request. I'm going to paste it in here to the body field. So it's this grant type equals client credentials. And then you're going to need to fill in your client ID and your client secret. So for client ID, we'll go back to our Azure app and you can see application client ID. So you can use the copy to clipboard button and you can paste that in here. And then the client secret, so the client secret is equal to client value, which can be found next to the client secret ID. If you go to certificates and secrets, you will see this value once you've copied that value head back over here and then paste it into client secret now i like to add a few more details 
into the notes of this action. I'm going to paste them in here. The first note is in the body client that underscore secret is equal to client value, which can be found next to the client secret ID. That's to help me know what is client secret because it can be a little confusing per the terminology used in the Azure application. And then the last thing I add here is the Azure app is update planner test. That's to tell me like which app is, am I using for this particular HTTP action? Now, the next thing we need to do to get the, as a part of the, getting the access token, now that this app, this action is set up is to parse the JSON of this action. So the JSON output of this action, and we're going to search parse JSON. This is another operation or this is another action that I frequently use. So I'm going to, I'm also going to save this one and then I'll select it or favorite, excuse me. And then I'm going to update this so that it says HTTP access token. So I'm parsing the JSON of this HTTP get access token. And then the content is going to be the dynamic content of my uh, HTTP get access token. So it's the body. So I'm going to select body there. And then the schema, there's a few different ways to get the schema. You could run this and then you'll get the output of this and you can copy it and then you can paste it into the payload or you can just grab from below and you can paste in the JSON here right into the schema field. And then the very last thing that I like to do is add a compose, which I have under my favorites already. And the compose is going to be to compose my access token. This is an additional step that's not required, but it will help to um, quickly to, to when you're doing testing to quickly see that it's provided the access token. So for this one, what I want is if I look here, the dynamic content under of my parse JSON action will include this access token. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to save and I'm going to run a test to make sure that it's getting the access token once I run my test. So let's go ahead and test. Then we'll continue to add our final HTTP action. Click continue and run flow. Done. Now it's, we've got a successful run. And if we click on our compose access token, we're going to see our access token there in the outputs. Now I'm going to go edit because we're going to move on to the next step, which is the actual HTTP request, which is going to update the task notes. So we're going to add our next HTTP request, and I'm going to actually call this one update task notes. For this one, our URI is this, which you can find in the video description. So once again, I will put this in my notes and indicate this is the URI. And you can see that we need to pass the task ID. So let's remove where it says task ID and we will select dynamic content. If we do task, we'll see under create a task, the dynamic content, the ID of the task. So we'll select that. And now this is going to be a patch, which is essentially an update. Now the headers, you'll find the information in the video description. You're going to need two headers. The first one is authorization and the value is going to be bare. And then the dynamic content, the outputs of, of our access token. You can also grab that from your parse JSON if you're not going to use this additional compose action. And then the next header is content dash type. And the value is application or slash JSON. Again, all of this can be found in the video description. And then the body of our request is going to be here. 
looks like the JSON looks like this, it's description, and then a colon, and then whatever you want, whatever text you want in the parentheses here, you'll include there. So now let's go ahead and save this and run our test. Let's go ahead and click run flow. Done. Now we get an error. And the error says precondition failed. And you can see where it gives you some details here. It says the if dash match header must be specified for this kind of request. So what we need to do is go back and edit. And we need a additional third header in this update task request action. So I'm going to just click into here and then the additional header is this one, if dash match. And the value of this needs to be something called an e tag. And in order to get that e tag, we need to add an extra action under create a task, which is going to be get task details. And the task details will include our e tag. So get task details, we add that in here. And then for task ID, you want to select enter custom value. And then select dynamic content. And if you search task ID, you'll see ID. And once you've done that, go ahead and add your compose immediately following get task details and search for dynamic content which is e tag, and you'll see that there isn't one. But the e tag does exist there. We just need to add a expression that will get it for us. That expression can be found in the video description. I'm going to paste it in here, and then I'm going to click add. And then I'm going to update this action title so that we know that this is the e tag i'm going to go down here and i'm going to use the dynamic content um you can scroll down and, and put the outputs in there we can click save and run our test one more time test Run flow. Done. Looks like we have a successful run. If I go over to planner and I open, oh, let me refresh here first. The table of our new task was testing a new task. So here we have that one from our last test. And then we can see that the notes were indeed updated. So the this one was, this task was created, and then immediately upon creation, the notes were updated. If we go back to Power Automate, and let's go back to Edit, we can see that our Compose now looks like it has the dynamic content of our, e, of our get task details, the e tag. But if we hover over it, we can see that it's just the our compose um, expression is there. So I just wanted to show that to you as a final thing. So I hope that you found all of this useful and you can apply this to your workflows. And as always, we will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.